May I call you Bobby? You may call you me Bobby or any uh, no, affectionate no, term that you can think of. Pardon me, madam. I understand <laughs> you're ruining my son. Why can't you do the same for me? I mean, <laughs> Jack Albertson, I've really been looking forward to meeting you because you are just super actor. Well, Academy Award winner will attest to yeah. that. But, the, of course, the current thing in your life is Chico and the Mask, right. this new TV series. And I have seen a little bit of some of the episodes, and I know it has tested very, very high with audiences in the preseason tests. And how do you as an actor feel about this now, knowing that everybody's talking about this and they're excited about it? How do you feel as the star? Well, I must say it, it puts a great deal of pressure on you because you have so much to live up to, you know. Starting off with a uh, the tremendous uh, impact uh, gives you something to work to, you know. And our problem, as I think of the problem with any series is, will be primarily in the writing area as we have, the, uh, we have a magnificent producer, a man with a great track record, who was a very sensitive and understanding man. And it was only because of him and the ideas he presented to me that I was willing to do a series. His name is Jimmy Comack, and of course, you remember from Eddie's father, he was producer, writer, director, and even actor on it. And uh, shows like Hennessy and The Martian and so forth. And uh, the, uh, the other uh, uh, outstanding aspect of this is that we have found a young man, 20 years old, who is probably one of the most fantastic young talents that I have seen in the last few years. Freddie Prince. Freddie Prince. And we're going to hear a lot about Freddie Prince. Yes, uh, oh, you certainly are. If he, this boy doesn't become a star in the next few months, which was just really doing it the short and hard way. But he, he writes his own material. And from his very first appearance on the Johnny Carson show, uh, we knew he was in. Uh, and that was what decided us to utilize him. You know. Now, Jack, that brings up a point. Did you have approval of uh, the person that you would be working with? To a certain extent, yes. I mean, I decided that since the, uh, the NBC brass and uh, Mr. Comack, familiarly known as Jimmy, uh, had enough experience to know what they were looking for that I would more or less leave it in their hands. And if I did not like the young man or if I thought it would be difficult to work with or I found some flaws in his, uh, his uh, approach or character, whatever, then I would make my feelings known and then we could fight it out from there. But from the very beginning, I was taken by very, as a very warm and uh, affectionate nature and his humor is of the same kind. It's affectionate. He talks about himself and his people. And it's hel he's hilariously funny because, I think, of this, this approach. And on top of everything else, he has a tremendous amount of class, which is a prime requisite for somebody who's going to be a star. But, Jack, here we have you as uh, the star of the series, and you've been a famous actor, and your credentials speak Infamous is the term, I think. <laughs> Not from where I sit. And here we have a new fella. As, as Mr. Comac said, he's been in show, or he's been an actor for 20 minutes. Yeah. Now, is there any sort of problem for you working with someone who is so completely new to the Not acting at all. business? Not at all. First of all, you have to remember that a great deal of my background and experience came from dealing with comedians. I was a straight man for people like Willie Howard, Bert Lahr, Bert Wheeler. Uh, Jackie Gleason spent three years with Milton Berle, many, many shows with Jack Benny, Red Skelton, etc. And uh, it has always been my function to present the person with whom I'm working to best advantage. I know that I'll come off well myself, but I do not believe in this the uh, star approach where you say, I am the star and everybody else is subordinate. I don't want anybody to be too good because they may detract from me. Uh, Jack Benny is a perfect example of the man who utilizes the people, good people, that he works with because he lets, allows them to be funny. He allows them to do things and he plays off them. And that is the way Freddie and I work. Uh, Freddie has a tremendously fertile and inventive mind and it's a joy to hear him come up out of left field sometime with some marvelous lines which crack us all up. You know, we keep throwing them around. He's uh, a beautiful boy, and I'm very, very fond of him. 
Are you at all concerned about the fact that already people are making comparisons to Sanford and Son, and if that is true, then they will also compare you, I guess, with Red Fox? Does that concern you at all, Jack? Not really. Uh, there may be, in a sense, some comparison, because actually it's, the, uh, it's an ethnic show, in a sense, and it also deals with a generation gap. Uh, however, I am not Red Fox, and uh, with all due respect to Red Fox, who is a very, very funny and talented man, he is not Jack Albertson. And uh, I, I don't see that there is any conflict uh, uh, between us or uh, about us. And uh, if we'll soon find out you know, how the shows work back to back. That my, uh, yes, I must confess that when I was first uh, uh, told of the, uh, the spotting, the programming, that I was uh, somewhat taken aback. I said, well, it's too close, uh, in a sense. But after thinking, or after watching the, the approach, uh, or rather the, uh, our pilot several times, I came to the conclusion that neither one of us would be harmed. Jack. Very good luck to you, and thank you, thank so you for talking with us today. My pleasure, Bobby. Look forward to seeing you again. Give my love to all the people in Dallas.